today I'll show you how to replace the toilet inlet valve in your toilet where the water comes from below the toilet reservoir and not from the side. This is an inlet, toilet inlet valve that is bottom feeding I think or from below, I don't know exactly how it's called. So first step when you do this is you want to remove the water that you have in the toilet. And here, actually, I wanted to show you one other thing here. Make sure you don't lose these pieces. This could be different for different toilets. So take a picture before you remove that, the lid cover. And here is my Siamp. This is the Siamp toilet inlet valve, water supply valve. And I had to replace the, the middle there, it used to be some other part that somehow I lost it and I put a piece of rubber and normally if this valve it's okay, the rest of it it's okay, you can really just replace the Siamp valve washer which is inside here. And I will show you how to replace that also, just in case maybe you want to do it like this. Here I already decided to replace the whole inlet valve I already bought it I had it next to me and I tried to check to make it work this Siamp valve and I was really I had enough of it I just wanted to replace the whole thing it, it the Siamp valve has this problem when it's not filling up the water reservoir the toilet reservoir and it's making this hissing noise in this hissing noise you hear it and the water level doesn't go up so you can use a pipe of uh, a pair of pipe pipe pliers to untighten it a little bit and this is the Siamp valve inlet valve washer and this is normally should be very rigid here but it's a bit got softer and it doesn't have any holes in it. Usually this problem happens when there are holes in this washer, but this one doesn't have holes, but still it's not working. So I decided to replace it completely. This is how you put it back. I have a separate video about this, how you put it back. This is really the best way to remove that handle from, from the valve housing and put it this way. It's very easy like this and normally it should work, but you see, it's still not working and sometimes it does work and it's a bit strange when it fills a bit with water it starts to work but I really wanted to make it work all the time not just sometimes okay before removing the inlet valve or any part from here I really have to remove all the water from the reservoir so it doesn't spill all around when it's uh, opened this is not very difficult you can use any cloth or sponge or anything and this is the inlet valve it's coming inside the water reservoir from the bottom and there are there is a gasket there a rubber gasket under it to keep the water from coming out and if you notice there is also a bit of rust on those seals so I actually did replace the seals also at the same time but they are in a separate video just so it's not a confusion with all the steps. This video is about the water inlet and in this model of the toilet you actually have to remove those seals from, from the toilet reservoir but in another toilet which uh, you, you might not have to do that. The reason why I have to do that is because I can't access this, uh, this is a fixed rigid hose, it's a pipe basically, a copper pipe and I cannot access it from below, you see that I can't put a key there to open it, to untighten it. So to do this I have to lift the reservoir of the toilet a little bit, just enough to fit a key inside there so I can open it. The good thing is actually when I saw the this rigid pipe metal pipe I thought oh no it's gonna be a problem but actually it's a bit flexible so you can lift it and lower it without problems this is some I don't know it's a some brand I found 
For this model of a toilet, reservoir and toilet, it's, this is a bit of a difficult part, but really holding, holding the, this is a, a one half inch, this is a half inch pipe connection and the same with the inlet, the inlet is also half inch. There was also an, a 3 by 8 but uh, I didn't need the 3 by 8 the half inch is uh, 1 over 2 1 over 2 and the quarter inch, I think the other one is a quarter inch I'm not sure, I don't understand why they call them like this so how I opened here the old valve, I hold it with the pipe wrench and I spin it and it came out finally that's the Siam valve, that's the inlet connection. It's really pretty good actually because it's metal. I think that's brass. It's really, it's been a long time sitting there and it's uh, other than the plastic pieces, the brass there, there was no leak, there was no problem really with it. And this is where the connection with the toilet goes in. That's where is the supply, water supply, and of course I turned off the water supply. There is a uh, faucet on the wall. This for sure I forgot to mention it, but yeah, you have to do that. If you don't do that, the water will go everywhere. That valve, that seal might need to be replaced actually, but I didn't have a spare one, so I left it as it is. And I also replaced these seals of the toilet one. It's interesting, one was fitted correctly, the other one was a bit strange. Anyway, those are fitted. You can see the separate video for that. If you wanna see some details about how these are installed, this is like a manual for all the models for this. I got the one for the feeding from the bottom, for the bottom feeding uh, water inlet, toilet inlet valve. That hose, I think it's for the overflow. I saw that it was for some special drain valve, but I didn't have it. I don't have it like that, so I will put it on the side there. Most important, this is metallic. The inlet connection is metallic. That's the rubber part. So the black part goes inside the toilet where is the water, and then the rest comes out from the bottom here. It's good. It's a good idea to wipe it with a bit of paper or a fiber cloth. Make sure that you don't leave any pieces on the edge there. It's very important. The edge should be very clean so that there is a good contact between the rubber gasket and the ceramic part of the reservoir. Here it's good to make sure it's centered. It was a bit difficult to keep it center, centered. So when you do this, you might have to lift the plastic part from behind a little bit. Not a lot, just a bit. I still use the pipe branch to tighten it. You don't have to tighten these things very a lot, too much. But it has to be enough that the water doesn't come out. When, uh, for me, when I saw that the shape changes a little bit on the gasket, on this white gasket, that's when I thought it's enough and it can go in. So now both of the seals are replaced. The valve, the inlet valve, the whole valve is replaced and it's ready to go back in. For this toilet, this is a bit of a difficult part, but really I kept these soft sponges on top of it and keeping the reservoir lifted and here like a bit of patience and it doesn't have to screw a lot because this uh, connection, this half inch connection doesn't need to screw a lot inside it but the key is that uh, this uh, washer should be straight the connection there, the nut should be straight otherwise it's gonna leak once it's straight, tighten it a little bit more with the pipe wrench and it's ready as you see the actual rigid connection for the water supply is not that rigid, it's a bit flexible, so that's great. I was afraid that I might have to replace the whole water inlet connection with a flexible hose, but I didn't have to do that. These are from the old, these are from the old seals, but I will use this because they are plastic and I didn't have an extra washer, I don't know why I lost one washer. And I didn't want to put the metal directly in contact with the ceramic. 
So I use these screws. They are also more easy, I think, to tighten and untighten. Hopefully I don't have to untighten them. But here you should really keep the reservoir straight, as straight as possible. And it's ready, ready to try. This is the toilet. So that's how it looks like. I put that hose on the side there. I don't know where to put it. It's a bit, it's a bit uh, not so great there. Most important is not to be in the way of the flush valve. The toilet has to be able to flush. And the seals look okay. So okay, now the, the water is uh, rushing in. And everything looks fine, it's really filling up as it should be. Most important is that it, it stops where you want it to stop and you can adjust. It's easy to adjust this. You ask tighten or untighten that, that uh, small screw on top. If you want to use less water or more water. Yeah, as I was telling you earlier, be careful, don't lose any pieces, no pieces from this should be lost at all. And if the toilet here is not, if the water keeps leaking, then you might have to clean the flush valve, the one in the middle there. And that's why it's good to also check it when you open the toilet, when the reservoir is uh, removed. But I never had the problem with the flush valve, with this, uh, the toilet, uh, it's only the water inlet valve that was really the problem for me, really. So now I'm putting everything back together and that's how you put back these uh, buttons. These are a bit difficult to figure out, but the small one, the small button goes on the small push rod inside there and then you screw them. And now it's ready to try. I hope this video helps you and let me know in the comment section below if you use a cyan valve and how many times you had to change the washer and if eventually you had to change the whole cyan valve or you used another brand. I could have bought a cyan valve, it was almost the same price as this one but having to replace it a few times I thought I will try something different. Thanks for watching.